Hey homeschool friends, welcome back to the channel. Let's do some homeschool planning. That's the plan for today as I'm going to take you along with me as I'm working in my Sunlight Homeschool Planner and planning out our upcoming week. And so I have done two videos, one on this planner where I review how it's been working for me for the past year as well as a Notion video where I talk about how I do kind of long-term planning and I wanted that to be more digital on my computer. And so that's how I organize myself for the homeschool year. But I wanna do a plan with me today. I want to take you guys along as I show you how it works as we're entering into our fifth week of homeschool. I've kind of got it dialed in. And so let me flip the camera around as I take you through planning for my fourth grader, third grader, and my twin kindergartners. Okay guys, I flipped it around. I'm ready to show you inside. I have my friction pens already and it really does help me to color code a little. I haven't done that in the past, but I do that now. And so I actually have a little tab that takes me straight to the week I'm on. And so this was the past week we were on, and so I'm gonna move that to the next week. And then I'm going to label our days. And so this is unlabeled, and it doesn't have anything along the sides. So that means it's the 21st on Monday. One of the first things I like to do is I like to go through from the last week I have over here and I have them all labeled and I've worked this out pretty well and so I'm going to just copy those in, the different subjects. And then the other thing I do like to do is I like to check my phone and I like to check my calendar as to what we have going on this week and one of the things is this is the first day of ballet for my daughter. So I need to kind of make a note for that. And then they have enrichment school over here, which I just made a video about. So I'll pop that up about kind of my tips for enrichment school and why I love it so much. But here's kind of my spread for getting started on school. So I like to set it up in the order of my day. It just makes the most sense in my head. It's not like set up per child because we all are doing things at the same time. So the first thing I have here is Bible and we use sunlight and at this point we're using the HVLC which is for my big kids but it goes for all the kids and so we're caught up. So what I can do is I can go to that next week which is our week five and see that we're on for day 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I do get the question as to if I just kind of copy straight from the sunlight instructor guide. Definitely not. I do not just rewrite all that because that's pointless. It's sitting in the same binder that I walk around with. That's why I have it set up this way is so that I can bring this out with me. And on Monday, I'll know that we have some parent reading, student reading. We are working on chapter four. We're continuing to memorize the Our Father. And so that's what we have for Bible. So I just write day 17. And if we do all that, I mark it off. If say we get a little off track, I might make notes to myself that I need to read double of the like talking to your kids about Jesus day or something like that. But otherwise I just do the days. Keeps it super simple and it makes my planning quicker. And so then I have my twins here and I have Abeka and their read aloud. So the, this is their read aloud from the sunlight HBLK. So Abeka, it looks like we're on Abeka 17 and we just do one lesson a day with them. And so far that's going fine. I'll adjust it if I need to, as well as their read aloud. And so I have their set of instructor guides from HBLK back here, and we're finishing up Dolphin Treasure. So we are actually right on track here. So I'll do day 17, 18, 19, and 20 as well. And sometimes we get off track, which is why it's nice to have it written here because I'm not assuming everything lines out. And then it comes to my son. So this is his math. We got 14, we did not do this, so I'm gonna move this. This is actually, a good week to show you when things don't go quite as planned because we had a lot going on this past week that I wasn't able to get to everything and so I tend to write like arrows to remind myself that we need to move lesson 15 over. So if we're on lesson 15, I think they have a test. I'm just going to do that because I will and I'll go check. All right, so I grabbed his test and worksheets book here and it just has a list of the tests in the back. There it is. And so yeah, test two is after lesson 15. Okay, so that's right. So test two here. Ah, I forgot to switch colors. And I'm actually gonna switch my twins as well. And the reason I have been trying the colors is because sometimes when I'm like looking at just one child, I'm like, are the twins done? 
and then I'll look for everything green on my schedule here and if they, we've checked everything off then they're good to go. So I kind of like having them color coded. Okay, moving on. And then it comes to my oldest, his independent work. And this is nice. I put this here and then I will also fill out his student planner from this. And so what I do for him actually is he's pretty easy. He only does the reading comprehension sheets and he's on week five, so number five, and then he practices typing the other days. So I just put this on his list and he knows that he has to do this after his math if I'm not done with his brothers. Okay, and then switching to my daughter here for her math, she's doing Saxon three and it looks like we got through lesson 15. So she is on lesson 16. Um, I have her do some supplementary math through Rebecca, and it looks like we're on Rebecca 17. Then she does logic, typing, reading comp 5, and typing. Okay, so that's her independent work here. And you can see I don't have anything on this day because that's their enrichment day, but I am going to actually add a little bit to my son because Saxon math 5-4 is a little longer and just doing it four times a week means we won't get even close to all the way done. So I want to add a few days on Friday so that he's doing a little bit of work before I drop them off. And then it comes to history, science lab. So first off, last week we didn't get any experiments done. So I think, I'm hoping we'll still get some experiments done here. But what happened last week is we just got, we got backed up. But not on the twin stuff. And so the twins I'm going to actually do them first because they're more straightforward. We were able to do all of their week four work except for their experiment, which hopefully maybe we can do experiment four for science K as well this Saturday, tomorrow. But let me just go. So they are then on week 15. So let me go to, oh sorry, week five. And so basically what I do is I do two days at once. So I'm going to do day 17 and 18. So history, day 17 and 18, and history, day 19 and 20. And then we're going to look at their science. And then I do 17 to 19. And then 17, 18, and 19. And then we'll do science K experiment number five, because it's the fifth week. So they're pretty straightforward. They're on track. The big kids and HBLC, we are not on track. So what we're going to do here is we have kind of the last two days of four. I mark off my guides here. So the only thing that we weren't able to do was this last two days of history. We did the Bible and, oh, we didn't do the read-alouds, but we did all the poetry. So that means I have read-alouds and history to make up this week. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I think I'm just going to go back and do some, kind of reread some of these sections or some of the sections we didn't get to and Bible and we're just going to kind of repeat for the first two days. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So you get to see how I plan this kind of in action. So history, day 15, and history, day 16, and then we'll move to the next week. I think what we'll do is we'll just review the Bible up here on those days and we'll just link up. I like to link up at least the history. You don't have to link them up, but I like to. Okay, so we're going to do review on these days and just kind of keep working on our memory verses and just go a little deeper into what we were doing. So we're going to do that. That way these start to link up. So then the read aloud will be from day 15. Day 16. Yep. 16, there we go. 17, read aloud. Day 18, and this is my HBLC, my big kids read aloud. So then as for science, we also, I think, got behind on science. Let me check. Yeah, so we're on 18 and 20. And that's only because we're only ahead in numbers because we're doing the five-day science program. But that means this will be Sci Day 21. And then the HBLC Science Experiment number five 
should go there. Oh, I made note of a Viking documentary I wanted to watch. So yes, I'll still make note of that because sometimes I just like to add extra things and I found a really cool Viking documentary. So I'll make a note of that. And then it gets us into our Brave Writer stuff. We've been reading through the book Otter this month and it's been really cute and the kids have really liked it. I wanted to test out just a dart. So I dropped the Sunlight Language Arts for this month just to test out the dart and figure out how we're gonna bring sunlight back in because I definitely wanna keep using both. I just don't wanna overwhelm myself. So first, handwriting, because we have copy work on that first day usually, I won't have the big kids do handwriting, I'll just have the twins. And so see, I'm back to my color coding and this way I can tell what the twins have done when I just kinda of look down the page. And then I'll do handwriting for the big kids on the other days. We're on week four of the dart. So what I tend to do here is I read through the passage obviously and they have lots of things to note how, what to teach whether you're talking capital letters action words commas series we've been talking a lot about series with conjunctions so I definitely want to do that and this it's because we talked about that last week so we can reinforce the this section so I definitely want to talk about this it's also re reverse dictation for this week and so I'm definitely going to do that but that'll be on Thursday there's a lot of kind of lyrical language and this kind of ties into the big literary device for the month. This is kind of the month thing because Otter is a verse novel, which is really why I wanted to do it because I wanted to expose my kids to just different kind of writing, not prose, which they're used to with our read alouds, but like this is almost like poetry, but a story form. And so I want to spend some time on this for sure. And then it has even a little bit of a writing activity. So this is, you can take any prose novel, so it's like we could take a favorite scene from like Harry Potter, we'll read it together, and then it says to cut the words apart and arrange them in lines of poetry. Hmm, that could be really fun. So just a fun little free verse poetry writing session. So I might do that on Wednesday. So I'm gonna do the conjunctions, plus the, the talk about the possessive pronouns, it's. And then reverse dictation on Thursday and we are going to do the verse novel idea plus the writing activity here and here we're going to talk about about this section consonants assonance and alliteration so repetition of sounds and music okay so we're going to do this one well I'm just going to say alliteration so we can talk about that actually I'm going to switch that so I'm going to do the verse novel to talk about verse novels plus writing assignments and then I'm going to do the alliteration plus prep for reverse dictation okay because they've never done it I've never done it we're really learning as we go so that's my plan for Brave Writer for our fourth week and then we're going to plan kind of how to celebrate this because this is the reason one of the reasons Brave Writer is even on my plate this year is because I want more fun and more celebration. I talked about this in my goals video. And so my plan is to celebrate this book. Either we're gonna do an at-home book party, but we're definitely going to the aquarium. So that actually is something I need to plan out. But I think I'm gonna do it this upcoming week, this next week, because we won't start the next book until September. But that reminds me to write down poetry, plus poetry, because we've been doing like a tea time treat time on Mondays. And so that's a very brave writer and we've been reading our sunlight poems. Anyway, so that's what I have there. And then I have my oldest son and daughter, their language arts. And so this is where I put their logic of English. So for logic of English, I have found out that for my kids, we can't just do one full lesson. So like for instance, my son, he is on unit seven and he'll be doing part two, but two and three, we have to split up. So we'll do it like this. Unit seven, part two B, and unit seven, part three A, and part three B. And then I do sometimes like to, well, I'll put it here. I'm not sure if I'll get to it, part four, for him. And then he also has his reader, and he's on reader day 98. And the only reason he's up so high in his sunlight reader is we started the readers mid-year last year in January. And I have a dedicated video to the Sunlight Language Arts 3 and A Week in Our Life. So if you're curious 
at all, please go look at those. I'll try and link them, but I might have run out of space to link. Okay, did I do that right? It's hard to talk and write. Okay, and then I have my daughter, and she's only on unit one. She just finished unit one, so that means she's doing unit two, part one, which only takes one day, and then unit two, part two A, and if we go faster, I'll just switch this, but I have found that this is the best schedule to keep them from being too tired, because otherwise they get a little fatigued if we try to push through on part two and part three. And then she's doing her readers. I don't even know the, which one she's on. Let, let me check that. So I can check her language arts is in here. And like I said, I have all the sunlight stuff in here still. We, we took a small break from the language arts, but we intend to come back. She should be on chapter three for writing the Pony Express. And so that's day 17. So she's on day 17, day 18, day 19, day 20. Okay, so let me double check that I don't have anything else I typically write on here. I think that's about right. So I have a little extra things noted. I've looked through my Brave Writer. I've added kind of the fun stuff. I think I'm pretty much done with planning out our week. So you guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope it was fun to see kind of how I plan, like how I actually write things in my planner and to hear how my mind works as I'm working out what we're gonna do for the upcoming week, what I'm thinking about, what resources I use, all of that. I hope it was helpful because I love watching these videos to see how other people do it. I feel like there's always little nuggets that other people do that I'm like, that's so smart. I'm so glad I watched this video and I hope that has happened for you in this video. And if it has been useful, helpful, entertaining, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to. And let me know down below how you plan. Let me know what your favorite planner is. I would love to know that as well. And so I hope you all are doing well. And that's what I have for this video and I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right guys, take care, bye.